welcome to the 3D world. Oh, and look at that. It even sounds better. Wow. Having no textures looks bad. Here is the best upgrade of the game. Life arts. Pixels and sprites just look much better than, like, featureless 3D. This is sort of upsetting. Yeah. yeah like the, the thing that really caught me on this mode is the scale of things. It's really weird. Like, the trees are as big as you, or you're as big as a tree. <laughs> yes. We took another one of those get big potions. We weren't expecting it. <laughs> Though, the one good thing about now being 3D is we don't just poke our sword in front of us. We do actually have a full range swing to it. Does that give you more hitbox detecting type hit? It does. We can actually take out multiple enemies at once if they're conveniently standing in front of us like that. Ooh, sweeping blow. Like this. Taking out two bushes at once. So efficient. Yeah, I really liked the, you know, the Dragon Quest type graphics. So like that eight bit charm. Yeah, I mean, I liked it when it, when that was a the. Way things were done back in the day, and I liked it, you know, for this this game at the beginning. I thought it was really cute, and it really fit with what was going on. This this is weird. Like I, I definitely could not play the entire game like this. Yeah, the way everything's just so like the ground is a uniform green makes me think you're fighting on a golf course. <laughs> well manicured. That's what you know, known as those uh, majestic land squids, as we're calling them. Someday we're gonna have like an, a beta version holodeck, and this is what it's gonna look like. Just very rudimentary, minimal sprites, it won't convince anybody of shit. <laughs> there you go, how's that? That's improved. Any better? Yeah. I'm prepared to accept this version of the holodeck. Nowadays, you like you see something or you hear the word pixelated, and you think, "Oh no, it's pixelated. It's terrible. I'm gonna have to retake that shot now." But no, this was actually an improvement. It's sort of charming, and, and it gives you more to work with. Just the depth of it. Like version one of the holodeck. If I step in there and it looks like something out of the Lawnmower Man movie or the original Tron movie, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. So you probably recognize where we are now. We're back at the beginning where we need to be agile. So that's the agile area right there we just walk through. So this game already has its backtracking. Well, it's slightly different now because that stone wasn't blocking us to the north before. Not agile enough for that gap. This actually threw me off for a second. And this is actually where the game starts being... Not, not exactly non-linear, but they actually throw a couple of dead ends. Like, you will cut down some bushes and say, Hey, I found something, and there'll be nothing there. They introduce dead ends to you. They have enough memory to play with that they can introduce dead ends. going the wrong way. So they're also adhering not just to the graphic limitations, but to the memory limitations? I'm guessing that's what they were going for at this point, yeah. You only have three projectiles on the screen at a time, otherwise we'll go ahead and spread them. It's... Slightly below mode 7 on my list would be the, uh, the camera zoom, or pan. Hmm. Everything's slightly 
near Boots and in terms of badness. Hey look, here's a dead end. Cut down two bushes, you find a little side path. Ah, there's nothing there. Where's your torch? Torches solve trees. It's gonna keep doing that, huh? Yep. Every time we open a chest now, it's gonna show our, our face so we can see our blank, dead eyes as we so magically levitate whatever we just got out of that chest. If only we could have unlocked that when we were still in child mode, I just think he'd be positively cherubic. Yeah, he even has like rosy cheeks. That is a welcome change. It is. So I think it's going to enhance our animeness. And yep. Sure does. Now we got some shininess going on in our phase too. So what platform would you say we're up to in terms of consoles? Is this like GameCube level or are we still at uh, N64? Yeah, it might be in the 64. You know, I think we're we're now beyond the, the Super Nintendo. We're, we're probably 64 early GameCube. I'd like to see if they can shoehorn in some Resident Evil in this game. It's not exactly part of the genre, but it'd be nice to see their take on it. Speaking of scale, Norio Mines actually have a mouse hole to get into. <laughs> Just slightly stab our sword at it. Okay, I've defeated the mines. Pottery? Still too tough to take on. Yep. That sign def definitely didn't have Bowser's face. Don't get carried away with what you might think it looks like. It was something else. And it's weird, because we're actually going to unlock something later on that'll change that. I, I don't know why. This game is good at the... There you go. Tell, don't show. Except that's not the way you're supposed to do it. Correct. <laughs> and there are invincibility frames while you're opening chest, as you saw when she was yelling at us about not going this way. <laughs> you unlock stepladder. They continue to be cute. Oh, this place is falling apart. Look at this. We have to unlock Spackle pretty soon so we can fix our walls. You unlock basic masonry. That was close. There's a trap. It had three bats in there. So the, the hearts, you actually, the hearts are actually cornered, so every time you get hit, you take a quarter of a heart worth of damage. So we actually do have a fair number of hit points. When do you regain them? Uh, we also, while we were walking through this forest, like, you know, I think while we were admiring the HD textures that we unlocked, we, we do now get hearts from either, or from uh, monsters. We have a random chance of hearts dropping from them. We did pick up one from a bat, but I was standing right on him when he died. You, you did hear the noise of me picking it up, and I did get the, the hit back, but it was, it was very quick. You'll, you'll see it plenty during this level. And are we all done with the Final Fantasy-esque uh, party combat? No, but while you're... This is where the game kind of gets a little weird, because 
she's with us, as we just saw. You know, she popped out and had a, you know, a line of conversation with us. But we can't access her, and she's not around for battles. We can't use her heal magic. So we are technically still a party. She's just not involved. You're just playing as uh, Will Wright. You briefly absorbed her post-utero. She'll, she'll pop out every now and then and give us a, a line of advice. Start the reactor. Okay. <laughs> I think if we had renamed her Quadro, um, I would have just played the entire game, waiting for her to burst out of your chest. <laughs> There's one. Yeah, there's one. In the water, where I can't get to it. At least they've successfully recreated that frustrating aspect of gameplay. You've unlocked inaccessible enemy drops. So the skeletons are a slight improvement on those little mindless shield guys we saw before. They don't have shields, they just have a sword. Also, that skeleton comes from Charlie Brown. Yeah, kinda. You ever want to see him with no skin? Well, there you go. But he will actually key onto us and he will attack us head on as much as he can, but they are susceptible to, if you just stand around a corner to them, you can get a quick hit in on them as they turn it. Or with your effectively 12 hit life meter, you can just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Right, but one of the weird things, even though we do have that health bar thing going on now, you'll see when we get hit, we do have, we do flash. Mm -hmm. That is not actually an invincibility for it. Ooh. So even though you are flashing to indicate you've been hit, there are, is no invincibility and you can be hit multiple times by the same enemy. Now are you actually hitting more than one guy at a time here? It looks like... no. Uh, if you hear the clang, that means I'm, I didn't hit them. If you hear the thump like that and see the dust fly away from them, that means that I did score a hit. They do take three hits. If you hold up a football, you can get them just to fall on their backs. <laughs> oh, I almost did that flawlessly. But I actually did want to come out of that room slightly damaged. Quattro here is about to uh, pop out again. <laughs> Let me heal that one hit you've taken. The previous two attempts in this dungeon I had not been hit to this point, so she was just completely useless. What fucked up world does the royalty knight their octopus? Look, he's wearing he's also wearing a visor, but he actually has a helmet. That's why he had to die. You get Tetris blocks. That's the invincibility frame, it's not working, because I got... I bumped into him, took a hit, then he hit me with a sword, and I took another hit. One of those blocks is full of eye cane powder. <laughs> Doesn't matter which one you hit, the better gonna screw it through either way. Uh, I did it three times, and the first choice always brought skeletons. So they're not mixing genres here, like you're not doing Final Fantasy combat, so you're not getting Final Fantasy experience, you're just linking it along. Right, like these, these are straight up Zelda where we're not getting experience. Hey, how did they know to name yeah. that card after the name we were going to give ourselves? That's amazing. That's actually one of the pluses of the game, is that the card does get named whatever you name your 
your character. I, I did like that touch. So that's a special audience bonus. Not only you name our character, you name one of our cards. Good job. It's a good card, too. Which is why you had to uh, fall down what seemed to be a, a death trap to get to it. And it was only that hole, the previous holes you bypassed, wouldn't work? Nope, you don't actually... This is, this is again, another throwback to Legend of Zelda, where you, do, you draw multiple levels to the dungeon. And you can fall down holes and land on the lower levels at certain points, but those first two holes, and if we jumped down this hole, we would just take damage and go back to the beginning of the room. Know your holes. Good advice, in any case. Really. Oh, like that. Uh huh. Not every dungeon is going to have a tornado generator, but I'm afraid of the ones that do. It's nice. I mean, your first instinct is obviously to avoid them. So I kind of like that, you know, they do reward you for either being a really bad player or a really good player. I mentioned Resident Evil earlier. Do we get to push statues around at any point? Not in this dungeon. Mm. Just, I, see, I see them, and the fact that there's an empty square behind it just makes me want to shove it around. You do get a very annoying puzzle. Huh. Can you light up all the blocks without unlighting any of them? Yes. It's not really challenging, but it's impressive the number of YouTube videos I've watched of this game where people fuck that up really badly. I expect quality game. And as I say that, I'm I'm pretty sure I got hit like four times making it through this spike yeah. trap. This is going on YouTube. That's okay. You can make mistakes. Consistent practice. You can unlock inch thick rubber soles. I think your spike problems will be over. Yeah, they don't really look like dangerous spikes. So you get pumps. Hmm. I'm seeing more flaws in the infrastructure. Yeah, it'd be really mean of them to put, you know, one of those tornado generators in this room. Yeah. Well, as far as puzzle pathing goes, this isn't bad. I mean, take your time and you will get it on your first try. It's not a muscle memory thing. This is. Slowing you down a bit. So you can auto swing now? Yeah, you can just hold down the button and it'll just keep swinging. Not terribly useful for. It's only really used when you're on in a, a dungeon like this and. Everything either dies in one hit like the bats, or they take three hits like the skeleton, and they'll be blocking you if you take your second swing anyway. So not not terribly useful, but it's, it's a thing, and it did happen in video games, so we we're being we were being shown off. Accurately and faithfully depicted. This room's kind of a dick. They drop a lot of enemies. I, I tend to always go for the wizards first because they do have you know, full room length fireballs that will be shooting at you. Oh, always take out casters first. Come on, that's every game. If they're not throwing fireballs at you, they're resummoning and reviving their minions. Could be worse. Could have used the uh, the golem build. Yeah, one, 
once they're dead, it's a lot easier. The bats are really just in the dungeon, just to give you some hearts back. <laughs> they're jars that fly around. The jars don't respawn, so you actually only want to break them when you need the heart. I'm pretty sure it's a guaranteed drop on those. No glisten jar. Nope, straight hearts. As I said, I don't, I don't believe you ever get any any gliss during these types of dungeons or experience. I almost said rupee instead of gliss. I'm not sure what I was thinking. It just reminded me of something else for a moment is all. If you squint. So bye bye Bowser. How would you know this? You wouldn't. You can see this chest if you're you know, on the south side of the room. Um, I thankfully did not record it, but I spent a fair amount of time throwing myself against every one of these walls. Sort of like this. Yeah, that it's like not obvious. Like there's no there's no different colored pixelation, you know, on where the wall is. Like you would think it would be. Be shaded differently to at least indicate where the path is. Yeah, I'm disappointed. The walls do different things. The one with the chain over it, you think might do something. The other ones that are obviously cracked might do something. But the ones that have no indication are actually worth walking through. Yeah, they're like they're, like, they're not hidden walls or illusionary walls. We are in a hollow sweet hollow deck. Maybe it's a puppy. Let's go fight the puppy. <laughs> well, it's like, whatever, I got a sword. Probably the first challenging battle of the game. More so because, you know, we don't have Molly with us to heal us. Aha! You have discovered the secret. I hope we get to unlock our triple fireball and spear attacks. Yeah, I really want that attack. Don't use it in your walls. Apparently, that's the shortcoming. Like I said, he's, he's nice enough to summon bats, which are basically just there for us to get a couple of hearts back. Depicted the puppy in this game, but I'll take it. <laughs> now, when I made it to that boss, like I said, he's the first challenging one. When I got to him originally, that's when he show off. If you're down to one hit left, you have that constant beeping noise. That's where I first discovered it. Another thing we're happy they included. So, we beat the first dungeon and got a sword upgrade, and uh, we're almost to her village.